Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Art at Home Live. Hello, my name is Christina. I'm the Vancouver Art Gallery's Family Programs Coordinator. And I'm speaking to you today from the unceded territories of the Comox Nation. Now, the word unceded, it means that the rights to the land and waters, they were never given an agreement. They were stolen. They were taken without permission. The Vancouver Art Gallery, where I work, is on the shared ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And to honor the land that I live on, I commit to learning about and to learning from the Indigenous nations, the Indigenous communities on the land who rightfully care for this territory. And I commit to thinking carefully about how I can do better to connect with the land and to the communities around us. Today, I'm very excited. Like I said that you're all here. How's everybody doing? I get to introduce you to, well, first of all, let me introduce you to Lin Shen. How's it going, Lin? Good. Hi, everyone. My name is Lin Shen. I am the program assistant of Institute of Asian Art, and I'm joining you on behalf of Vancouver Art Gallery, which is located on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And as a first generation immigrant from Taiwan, I recognize that I'm using nature resources that are stolen from this land. And I'm committed to listening and learning from the indigenous community and act respectfully and responsibly to this place I now call home. Vancouver Art Gallery launches the Institute of Asian Art, IAA, in October 2014 to deepen its commitment to Asian art and build relationship with the community that produces it. May is Asian Heritage Month, and Vancouver has one of the fastest growing Asian population in the world. I'm very honored to have IA partner up with Art at Home today and to have artist Huang Ming Yun with us to share her artwork and process. Thank you, Lynn. What a lovely introduction. I'm also honored to be partnering with IAA and sharing some of the work that you've been doing. And we would like to introduce an artist who makes us think about the world around us in different ways, using language and words and natural environments. And this artist's name is Hyung Min Yoon. And her work is on display right now at the Vancouver Art Gallery in the exhibition, Where Do We Go From Here? on display until June 13th. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Hi, thank you so much um, for having me here. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited um, to be here and um, to share this experience. Thank you. All right. So today, what's really great is that we can ask uh, Young Min Yoon, or we'll call her Min for short, um, questions about her work that's at the gallery, about her big ideas and things that inspire her. And a way to ask questions is you can use the Q&A function. There's a button at the very bottom of your screen. It says Q&A with two little speech bubbles. You can type your questions in there. There's also a way that you can kind of put in your ideas and suggestions and thoughts using the chat function. So if you click on the chat fun function, you can ask me questions, like I said, or you can just kind of share your thoughts and ideas because we're going to be asking you your thoughts and ideas. That's the best part of these sessions. So make sure that it is set. Your settings are on all panelists and attendees in the chat function. And you know what, you can even use chat right now to type in and say hi to everyone that is joining us today. Hello, everyone. So I have one more thing to talk about before we begin. So we want to think about how we can create a safe and welcoming space for everyone here today. Hello, everyone who's starting to come into the chat saying hi. We want everyone to feel welcomed and included. So to do this, we want to make an agreement together. So by being here today, we all agree to take pride in speaking up uh, and sharing our ideas. We all agree to be curious, open, and celebrate each other's ideas. We all agree to listen and learn to each other with care. And uh, we all agree to use our comments to uplift <laughs> each other. So hello, everybody, again, who's saying hello, Marilyn, Coco, and Max, and Yvette, and Navneet, and Penny as well, who's joining us. What we're going to do to start our session today is we are going to watch a film that is shared, or sorry, that was created by Min. And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you even, to use your bodies to act out kind of how you would respond to this 
film? What do you want to use your body to do to recreate what you see? So I'm going to play the film and then afterwards we're going to talk about what we noticed and Min can share a little bit more about her work. Are you ready? Think about ways you can move your body. What did everybody think? I'll show you what I did if, if you are all brave enough to act out yours as well. I kind of moved my hands to go like this while I was watching it. What did you think about Lynn? I saw myself as a jello. I can tell. <laughs> and Min, I don't know if you were thinking of any of these things as this work was being created. Yeah, I'm too, look at it. Sorry? I'm, I'm too close. Sorry? I'm too close. So now let's talk a little bit about it. What did you notice about this work? You can put your ideas and your answers and responses in the chat. What did you notice first about this work? Lynn, what did you notice as your body was kind of turning into jello along with the work? I noticed movement. Absolutely. It's constantly moving, just like that, with a rhythm too. Aha, so not just movement, constant movement, movement in a rhythm. Um, I also noticed the movement. Um, Penny is saying that you noticed the ripples. Okay, so this is getting us, this is kind of what I was thinking about when I was going like this. So this is getting us maybe closer to how this was created because I wanted to know how this movement was created. And Coco thinks it looks like two ladders together and Max thinks it looks like a reflection of two buildings. Interesting. See, we're all going to have different ideas when we first look at an artwork. Min, would you like to share a little bit more about how you created this work? Yeah, sure. Um, it is really interesting ideas and um, it certainly looks all like that. And sometimes I, I thought of letters um, to uh, this is uh, a, a part of uh, a video of uh, a work that I made. Um, entitled the sun moon moon sun the at the beginning you can see that um, those two characters um, and and then when the camera comes down they you can see that there's a water and then it reflects um, and the reflection shows um, the sun moon moon sun um, which is the the word on the left is sun and then the right side is the moon in Chinese character but you can only see it uh, correctly uh, when it's in the um, water. Maybe we can see the um, uh, the installation shot of this work. Let's do that. Let's take a look at the installation shot. We are going to talk a little bit. You said an interesting word, installation. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here. But let's take a look at this image. Mm -hmm. You can share a little bit more about that. Yeah, so that is the recording of this piece, um, uh, which uh, is the installation um, that has three different parts. One is the, the light object that is hanging on the, on the black wall, and the other one is the, the, the water in a, a, a disc. And there's also a water dripping from the ceiling. Um, which disturbs the um, the reflection um, as you saw, like irregularly every few minutes, every few seconds. Um, so that the 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 word 
appears and disappears and uh, appears uh, quite regularly, more rhythmically. I like how you use the word appears over and over. So things appear in different ways. As I mentioned, you use the word installation. Has anyone heard of that word before, installation art? Min, you mentioned that this work, it has three different parts to it. It has the sculpture of the characters, it has the water in the dish, and it has something that's dripping water to create those ripples that uh, Penny noticed in the session. So installation art is art that has many different parts or objects arranged in one space and installation art changes how we experience or maybe what we notice about a space or a place. Shall we take a look at another artwork? This is actually the artwork that is installed right now at the Vancouver Art Gallery in the exhibition, Where Do We Go From Here? And first of all, let's take a look at two different images. Now, first let's compare and contrast. So you can put your answers in the chat again, if you like. What is similar about these two works? What is the same? Lynn, what do you notice? I noticed both works are placed in a natural environment with a body of water using reflection as part of the work. Ah, I noticed the reflection as well. What about what's a little bit different about these works? Max noticed the reflection too, fantastic. When I first look, I think I noticed the reflection in that the calm still waters, but the backgrounds are a little bit different too. Um, someone else is noticing that they're in different places. Very interesting. So when we look at these artworks, Sometimes I like to think about, okay, but what does this artwork make me wonder? And when I look at this artwork, or maybe we can look at some images uh, just on their own, Lynn, if we go to the next images, how does the same kind of what looks like a sculpture to me, how does it get to these different places? So Ray noticed that the reflection is distorted in one. Interesting. So we're seeing that different effect of the water on each work. Absolutely. So think about what does it make you wonder? Again, Min, would you like to share about maybe some of the big ideas behind this work? And then maybe you can answer my question about how did you get these sculptures, these characters to all these different places? Yeah, absolutely. This is the similar um, uh, work in this, in, the, in this body of work. Uh, that I use is, uh, I'm, I'm using this uh, character, it's also a Chinese character uh, meaning door that uh, you might notice, you might know, or you, otherwise you might notice that it looks like a, a door. Um, and these characters uh, previously uh, the, in the Sun, Moon, Moon, Sun 2, that um, the, the word actually uh, sun and moon together, that means bright. And that was also, it had a, a, a very ancient history of, about the, uh, the, the word. And these all words are, um, have like 3000 years old um, ancestor called, um, so-called uh, Oracle Bone Script. Um, and some of them looks very similar and you can easily trace back. Um, and I, I read this book uh, called uh, uh, about the Oracle Bone script uh, by um, Shiraka Shizuka. Uh, it's like a, he's the, the late um, scholar in this field. And he's, he talks about how um, the, the word must have been um, like a more symbolic door um, as an in, in between space. Um, you know, linking a human, the world of human and the spirits because of the, the, the words actually originally developed um, to be used in the oracles. So I, I thought I was very touched by the sort of like hypothesis and um, wanted to deliver it and um, through, through water, um, which I, I imagine um, it could be a medium linking between um, the past and the present and the future. So for this piece, I um, I wanted to move uh, move uh, around in a different body of water, and I did so um, in and around Vancouver. 
Um, and it was interesting that Lynn mentioned that uh, there's like a natural environment. And one of the kind of like a, the qualities that I was looking um, when I was looking for different locations um, is that some sort of a, a natural environment, but there's a trace of culture. Um, you know, I, I believe the, the nature that we experience um, are mostly, it is a staged nature that um, we can access to and nothing's, you know, there's no kind of absolute um, nature and absolute culture. I think, I, I believe it's all uh, kind of mixed. Um, and I was looking for those places like the, you know, you can see the signs at the background here. Um, uh, and then um, there are three different places. Uh, the other picture, can you see the next one? Yeah, there's a, like a control tower. A lot of people notices um, the locations. I also sh uh, have shown this piece uh, in different places. And I had a great pleasure showing here because a lot of pe uh, people can um, uh, recognize the, the locations. Um, and like, yeah, like people have asked me um, whether they guessed right and it's almost always right because um, it's, it's quite locally made. Um, and yeah, those are the uh, the ones. And um, there's by request, popular request. There's one other picture that I added um, that I don't often show. Is this uh, picture that um, that is it is made of um, inflatable? And I had to come up with an idea uh, to make it portable. And um, this is the first time I I got the piece. I I uh, made it custom made and inflated at home and it was like almost reaching the ceiling. Um, but that made, you know, it was made that the piece was made uh, a team of two people um, who were busy bringing this one and a generator and some weights and strings um, and to quickly blow up the piece and um, also deflate um, at the end. Well, thank you, Min, for sharing this picture, because I am one of the people that made the popular request <laughs> included. <laughs> what I love about this image is it answers one of my questions is, first of all, how did you move these, these pieces from place to place? And I just pictured you, how do you carry these things? So by making it inflatable, um, I wonder, did you blow, did you kind of inflate them on site? Yeah, I'll have to. Um, otherwise, I mean, I didn't have a, a truck to move around. And um, also, yeah, it has to be kind of fresh. <laughs> yeah. So, I yeah. also love that it gives us a sense of scale. So by scale, I mean size. You see how big these characters are that you're using. Yeah, because when it goes out in the outside, in the landscape, they don't look um, as thick. Right, of course. Yeah. One thing I noticed uh, if we go back to the previous image too, it's because I can read Chinese. So the actual sign is the reverse, but the reflec reflection is the right way of writing the character door. So sometimes you, you kind of play with illusion and real. So what is realistic, what is illusion? So it kind of like, it, it's, there's a sense of playfulness to it too. Mm, absolutely. I think that's the, this, the, that's a really good point. And then the core of um, the question I have in this work, that there's always, um, yeah, the, the illusion and the real object, but the, the illusion is, of, uh, is showing it correctly. Um, and also, uh, yeah, it's, it is facing each other. And then another work that I actually, um, I don't know about how the time goes. Um, yeah, I can quickly show the Earth, heavens. Oh, the so insulation. Yeah, we can we can look at the uh, Earth, heavens very quickly. Um, yeah, this piece uh, it is kind of like a literally playing with the um, the pictogram that I noticed the 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 word meaning up, which is the up right side is the character meaning up and then when it's actually reflective it's showing down so this is kind of the version i made um to show in korea at first and um yeah everybody kind of uh 
uh, very naturally will uh, react um, and be able to read <laughs> um, that as uh, the heavens and the earth and meeting together. And another point was this is that um, the first of like I, I had a few different um, iterations, but the first location uh, was in the river very close to the, the ocean. And then it had a tidal change. Um, the water level will go up very high, like the, the picture that you saw before. Um, and it, was, it actually touched. And then the when it goes down, it will go very low, um, which created like, you know, unexpectedly interesting um, kind of meaning to me that, you know, the heaven and earth uh, kind of have distances and then comes back together. Um, naturally and then which was a very interesting thing. Um, and did you want to have a look at the installation of uh, the doors? Sure. So, it's segwayed. This, it is um, a great example of how seeing things in the gallery is never the same as seeing them on a screen and how the installation of actually being in the gallery is so much more powerful. But you can describe your decisions about how you made this kind of glowing sense behind your works. Yeah, just the image alone doesn't really do the justice for this work because it is an installation piece um, as a photographic uh, work. And then it, uh, it com it's composed of the backlit film, which is kind of the film that um, you need light uh, to see the film, otherwise it will be very dark. Um, and it is often uh, used uh, for light box. Um, photos, but I decided not to go with light box for um, many reasons. Um, and but I sort of made it uh, like a light box without the box. Um, so there's a very bright LED light, um, but it is in the box so that um, it, it, that is the same ratio as the film. So it, it shows exactly how um, just around the, uh, the, the light the film. Also, it is in the center where the character is, so that, that will be the brightest point, um, just like the other work that I use um, internally lit um, installation work. Um, in a very similar way, the, the character will be lit the most in this case. It's interesting. I think of your work as so much about reflection, and it is like you said, the water is that medium or that thing that you use to show um, the real reading of the character and how you use water to kind of make us think about what's real and what's illusion, but it also requires light to create a reflection. Exactly. Too. So it is such an important part of your work too. I wonder if you want to show us one more um, work that you installed a few years ago at a place that some people, if you're from Vancouver, do you recognize where this installation is? See if you recognize this site. And then maybe Lin, or maybe Min, you could tell us a little bit more about this work. And then we're going to think about how we can use water um, and the reflection of water and light to create our own mini installations. Yeah, this piece actually was the first in the series, and um, it is Dr. Sun Yat-sen um, Chinese classical Chinese garden um, in downtown Vancouver. Um, and it is actually the like the English version of Earth Heavens that I made afterwards. Um, and uh, the like this this little pond is is amazing. It, it, it reflects very well. And I actually learned that they put um, um, plants that could make the pond foggy. So it has a perfect reflection. Um, and here I uh, put words the earth. Uh, reflects the heavens, um, but it, it goes word by word, so it can float and it changes. Um, uh, so it could be the heavens reflects the earth, or vice versa, which was um, kind of the yeah the playful part of uh, installing um, in the small pond. Um, and yeah, this one is not entirely lit, but I had other. Um, spotlights around um, to see. Um, yeah, it was it was many years ago. It kind of made memories fading. <laughs> it's a great example of how installation can change over time and how it changes the experience of the space that it's in. So I think that's a great example as well. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more behind the scenes of your processes, Min. Um, it's great to learn a bit more about the characters, um, the Chinese bone characters that you're using also. I love how you take language and um, use it in a way that makes us see space and the world around us in completely different ways. And now maybe you want to share how we can use language and water and light uh, to create our own mini installations. What do you think? Maybe we should, maybe we could. Wow. Oh, all right. We can take a look at this. I don't know if anyone remembers this image from the very beginning. Shall we share a quick video um, of what we're going to be creating? And then Min, maybe you can walk us through the process. What do you think? Sure, yeah. Um, so maybe just in case I, I, I made this and recorded it, um, and it may be a good uh, thing to watch so that we know where what we are heading. Um, there are just really few uh, materials um, we need. This is just to experiment um, in a way that we, you know, like on a, if you like puddles, um, I do. And, you know, if you do also watch, um, stop and watch what's going on in the puddles, this is exactly the same thing. Um, except that we're, we're trying to, to make it, make the, the environment um, indoors uh, in a very short time. Um, I think that's what art does. Um, it's the same thing. It's, a, it's already out there, but we we try to to make people to notice um, and take time to uh, kind of contemplate contemplate on it. Um, so if you play the video um, of this one, yeah, what I did was like I simply made a very quick um, pipe cleaner sculpture. Um, writing sun but like the sun will be shown um on in as a reflection um so don't look at the the actual pipe cleaner but we're just pointing um trying to see uh what's on there and then we so we're gonna choose a word um or letter or it could be a symbol it could be anything um preferably a bright color in uh, like white, um, because that's the, that's what gets reflected. Um, and then at the end, we'll, we'll see um, how it's showing on, uh, we'll use a, a flashlight if you do have one, or you can use your phone um, to see the difference. So I will change the camera here. So um, I suggested you, if you have actually like a black um, or very dark tray, or this is like a, um, like a pot tray, or um, you could just use it. Or if you don't have one and you can just grab a, a tray, um, any tray and just cover it with black um, garbage bag. Uh, or any um, plastic. And it could be very simple. It doesn't have to be uh, really well done. You can just, uh, if you're gonna do it, you can just cover it and um, just to line it um, clean. And you can just wait, like the water will weigh down. So it doesn't um, have to be looking um, or you can just put it out. Um, to the side and also can just pour water over. So here um, to not to make actually too much noise, I'm just gonna use this one um, to show. Before that, we're gonna decide, you can decide any anything that you wanna uh, make with pipe cleaner. Um, so what I did, um, to test before was I wrote, um, I, I made it sun. So I'm gonna write sun. And this is a little brain teaser and I, I love doing this. Um, and then draw a little line on top and then think about how it will uh, reflect 
backwards, uh, upside down, and mirrored. So the sun, in order for the sun to look like a sun, you can you can imagine um, and draw and draw. And the thing that we're gonna make with pipe cleaner is the top. Um, if you don't have pipe cleaner, you can also use anything that you don't mind getting wet, but bright color uh, or anything plastic. Um, that's all good. And you can also make it um, uh, like cursive, but the cursive uh, upside down will be much harder. <laughs> so I'm gonna just very quickly make this shape. This S, which seems like the, the shape of S that um, kids often write when they first learn to write S. And this time this is gonna be right. And if you do somehow like happen to have some black, um, I'm gonna make a little um, stand. So this is really easy to, make a shape with uh, pipe cleaner. Um, if you don't have black, that's completely fine. You can just use white again. And then you can, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little loop at the back just to make it stand very quickly. So then, and I'll just cut this part out. And then it can stand. You can make other like symbols um, or shapes, make um, like rainbow or like why do you shape and then we'll make a full circle and a reflect with a reflection together. And or if you do your name, you can just do the one uh, letter. And you can also double so we look at the camera. What are you making, Christina? <laughs> Is that a word or a, in a symbol? So I am making a word. It's something that I, well, I'm inspired by you. I like to think about, I like to look up. So I'm using the word skies. Ah. I flipped it, I traced it on the back. So okay. I believe that my reflection, my sculpture, it's yeah. going to look like this. I've started with my S. I love working with pipe cleaners, by the way, because yeah. you can create anything. It doesn't have to be a word, but like you said, I really liked um, that brain teaser part of it. Mm, yeah. Like, hmm, I need to adjust this. It's, pipe cleaners are great to adjust, right? Because my K is not looking too much like a K. And again, it doesn't have to be a word. You don't have to use letters. You can use a language, character, symbols, an image. Um, so yeah, I'm just playing. I, mm -hmm. Oh, great. Yeah, and then depending on what also like letters you choose, it could be just the same upside down, like O. I'm very excited to see if it reflects mm -hmm. as I plan it to. Very good setting, Christina. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> put some rocks. <laughs> I put some rocks in the corners to keep them down. And I was inspired to think about the natural world around me by you. So I have some of my plants behind here. They're right. definitely not just there to hide my messy house. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Okay, maybe. So I should have my tree showing too. But whenever you want to try it out, you can just put a tiny bit of water 
I can make a shallow pool. It doesn't have to be very much. So you put the water in min first and then the pipe I could, yeah, I don't, um, yeah, you can put a sculpture first and then put it in. And then I'm going to try putting in. Here, you can already kind of see is I love how so much of this is like all art is an experiment. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out. Oh, that's the. Mm. Okay. And did you did you say min? That sometimes when you create your large sculptures that you do mini installations to try and figure out different parts about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it is hard to imagine what it's going to be like uh, with a big, um, in a big scale, uh, but it definitely helps. And um, in terms of like a, a water reflections and ripples, um, it's it's rather physics than you know um, art in a way, but I I really enjoy um, watching um, how how they behave. Mm -hmm. I find it quite fascinating. Um, so before I actually go out, um, I'll try to try to see um, like what it's gonna be like, and also it is a good exercise too. Um, move my brain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm also thinking I might take this outside. It looks like it's about to rain where I am, maybe when there's some puddles and it's still yeah. after the rain and see how this sculpture can be placed somewhere else, kind of like what you've done and how mm -hmm. that changes. Yeah, so I have these letters here and then you can see a little bit um, and you will notice, you know, like outside when you see a puddle, sometimes some of, some of them looks really well and um, some of them won't depending on the light situation. So if you do have a um, flashlight, I have to do backwards. Let's see, um, camera is in front of me. I'm gonna see if I can light the words like I did before. So you can see, don't don't think about the um, pipe cleaner. So you can, you can see it. The words coming here. Yeah, what is going? What are just uh, you need a little bit. Um, oh, I can see yours, Christina. I can see it. I like how as I poured the water after putting yeah. it, in, and it reminds me of your heavens reflects the earth, where the, yeah, water, the letters have already taken off on me. Mm -hmm. That looks fantastic, and it's moving. <laughs> it's moving. So I'm yeah. just wondering if you can see. Mm hmm. Another thing that I did was um, maybe I can leave some. Yeah, you might want to uh, change the light in your room if it's too bright. Um, it will be hard to see. Um, mm -hmm. And I have this dropper. If you want to create some um, movements in the water or actually even the uh, just blowing. Um, works very well as the wind. Um, also, I have like a water spray bottle that you can create some storm there. I'm experimenting or, with my phone. Yeah, you can just use your hands to create different movement. Um, when I was uh, making the doors piece, uh, like I, I took it out to a mud flat um, and I wanted to also record the, just the movements of the reflection. So I created a lot of uh, uh, waves 
and I watch how it behaves. Um, Cause it's very different from like the, the, the sun, moon, moon, sun, um, where it is the, the, the disc is a, a one meter diameter. Um, and it, it just, the ripples move within it um, versus the ocean is such a, such a big container. <laughs> So it, it is very interesting um, how I can make different ripples and how it behaves and responds back to my uh, the ripples that I made. I love just thinking of that concept of, of ripples and change and, and how much you learned about the behavior of water through your installations yeah. and through these works. Mm -hmm. I also really liked how you, like, you could see your plants there. <laughs> they became part of the installation didn't they yeah exactly that's it's interesting to sorry is you it was interesting to observe on the side because zoom on the camera itself we also make the letters mural as well the reflection yeah right. so you have multiple layers of playing with reflections and yeah. yeah, that was already a little bit of brain teaser for me um, to think that um, how to show <laughs> this to the camera in front of the camera. Um, Still that theme of like reality and illusion too. like even I love that Lynn that you included that idea of in zoom or reflecting it again or mirroring or transforming it again. And like you said, Min, you like to include the natural world around us, but also mm -hmm. traces or elements of, you know, human kind of creation to our culture. So it's cool to think about how we're doing something that's inspired by water and reflection and light, but with a technology. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I often imagined, um, and, uh, you know, how the, this is also like what uh, Nam Jin Paik, the, the video artist pioneer um, said that, uh, you know, like a long time ago, uh, the the water would have been, well, like watching the water would have been the, the first TV entertainment for humans um, before we had screens. Because it is actually a moving um, image, not just the, the still image that, you know, reflects the, the moon on the, on the pond and it, it never is it's really still that's such a beautiful thing to think about and to watch for a long time and observe hmm. too, when we see puddles and I, I remember i read in fact that ancient uh, time in china there are so many poems and song written because of the moon the reflection yeah. of the moon yeah exactly yeah it's a big big um part of the east asian culture um, and I admire that, um, you know, the, the sort of like the people could have time when that was sort of the entertainment, uh, you know, people get together and drink and uh, watch the moon <laughs> on a boat. <laughs> well, it still can be done. And yeah, you know what you can do if you want to recreate the mini installations, you can take them outside and enjoy mm -hmm. watching what happens with the light or the time of day. And that also makes me think about how challenging it must've been for you, Min, to find that perfect surface of water and perfect time of day to create these reflections. I think it's a great way to think about your work in new ways. And you make us think about the world around us in different ways and stop and take the time to observe. So I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having sharing me. Your oh, thank you. Ideas. And um, Lynn, I also want to thank you for joining us and thank you for your partnership and in sharing works from artists. Also, by the way, Min's work has been made part of the collection of the Vancouver Art Gallery, which is something to celebrate, which is really exciting as well. So this is where you can now kind of take some of these ideas and these inspirations and create on your own. If you need to see some of the demonstration again of uh, Min going through the mini installation. This uh, session will be available on the Art Gallery's YouTube. We want to say a big thank you to those that support and make Art at Home possible. We want to thank uh, Canada Life. We also want to thank the Diamond Foundation for their generous support to make all of the programming possible. And Lynn, I don't know if you wanted to share anything or Min, if you had some ideas to share in closing. 
Yes, I have. <laughs> Just give me one second. Let me pull out the PowerPoint. <laughs> what I do, what I'll do right now is if you want to learn a bit more about Min's incredible work, uh, one of which is a new virtual reality project at Lafarge Lake, part of, um, or it's in partnership with Evergreen Cultural Center. You can check out that word. I believe it's that work. I believe it's called Seedling. Is that right, Min? Yeah, it is a it is an actually augmented reality um, location based augmented reality piece that you can experience um, through your own phone um, or tablet uh, in Coquitlam um, at Lafarge Lake. So it's AR augmented reality, mm -hmm. not not mm -hmm. VR, like I said. I also want to invite everyone to join us for future Art at Home sessions. We have a session on June 16th with a uh, storyteller, Akung Jade, who's going to be sharing some Haida stories, the Raven's Feast with us, and some song and some language. I'll put the link for registration in the chat there. And Kung Jade and Bob Baker will also be joining us on June 21st to celebrate Squamish and Haida stories and song. And I will put that link for registration in the chat as well. So the biggest thank you is to all of you for sharing your time with us today. A huge thank you to you, Min, as well, for spending your time with us. And thank you to Lynn. But like I said, it's always you who join us and support us. Um, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate the most. And the galleries will only welcome you all back to a safe physical distance contactless visit. And this is currently the exhibition we have in the gallery and also at offsite as well. So feel free to book a time ticket and come visit us. And program like this require time and expertise of gallery staff. And none of that would be possible without the support of you, our visitor, our members, and our donors. Your contribution to a new membership, renewal, or any support is what allowed us to produce program like this Thank you and see you next time. Please stay creative and until we meet again. And thank you, Min. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Bye everyone.